Good morning, and this is Christmas season. And as we celebrate the season, it's good to reflect few thoughts from the Christmas story itself. If you have your Bibles, you can turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. Luke 2, verses 6 and 7. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no room available for them. This is a very familiar passage in the Bible. I'm sure that all of us know that when Joseph and Mary, they were looking out for a place where Mary can give birth to Jesus, they found no place for him. They knocked at every possible place. They finally went to an inn where they can sort of take a place where Jesus could be born, but they didn't have room there as well. And finally, you know, Jesus had to be born in the manger. Now, I would like to turn our attention to the innkeeper who was there in the stories. It's a lot of assumptions that probably we may have to make in the context of the innkeeper. Whatever may be the motivation or his preoccupation that he had, we do not know. The reasons why he turned down Joseph and Mary, the reasons why he had to say that there is no room in the inn. Probably the reason could have been money. Money could have been a reason because there was a high demand for rooms during that season because all of them were coming to uh, register themselves. The census was being taken. So there was a huge demand for rooms for people coming outside the city to come and stay there so that they can register themselves. Probably he didn't have much time because of the crowd and the people around. Not probably, uh, probably not inquiring much from Joseph. Because people who are all around and busy and a lot of conversation and talks going on, probably he didn't want to hear the full story about Joseph, why he was looking out for a room and what is the background behind the whole thing. Or he could have been a person, even after seeing Mary, did not have the grace to say that, well, I would open up you know, the inn for you or I would make some adjustments in the inn so that you can uh, you know, come in. We do not know the reasons. He was probably, you know, had different motivation, the motivations that we cannot understand. Whatever it may be, now this is the same question that we need to ask ourselves. What is the motivation that we have? What are the things that we are preoccupied with? That we are so busy that, you know, we are not able to listen to the knock on our doors. Is work keeping us so busy? Is money keeping us so busy? The drive to have more, the drive to, you know, always engage in one thing or the other, you know, in terms of a work, you know, are we engaged in that manner? What are the things that we are preoccupied with? What are the things that we are so motivated that we hardly hear any knock on our doors or we are willing to open up our doors, you know, to hear what God wants to talk to us or speak to us? Probably some of us, were so, we are so busy with our families, our children. Or some of us, we are so occupied with our gadgets, you know, we don't have time for anything else. Probably sports, the passion that we follow. Or it could be anything, you know, that sort of preoccupies our minds so that we don't want to open ourselves or we don't want to hear and let, you know, God to intervene in our life. What would be the convenient time for God to knock at our doors? That's a question we need to ask. Probably some of us may say that, well, I need to get along in years. Probably when I'm 50, you know, you know, God should knock at my door. Probably some of you may say that, well, I need to settle down well in my life. Then I would want God to knock at my door. Probably some of you may say that, well, I want to get the best job that I can. Then God can fi finally knock at my door. It may be after certain accomplishments or maybe after a certain age or we would have different probably times that we are thinking that that would be the suitable time for God to knock at our door. But you need to understand that there are many times we see that God is actually at our doorstep and we are unwilling to open ourselves to him. And that's what happened to the innkeeper. Probably his ears were not receptive. His ears were not attentive. 
probably he was occupied with money and work and his busyness and he never found time to hear the complete story from Joseph. Now, the most important thing is that we need to be sensitive to let God in our work. We need to be sensitive to let God into our families. We need to let we need to be sensitive to let God in the things that we do, in our ambitions, in our goals, in our passions so that we sort of connect ourselves well so that there's enough room for God to dwell in the things that we do. Many times our work is a challenge or a chaos. Our families are challenging. To manage our children is challenging because we are all alone. But this morning or this time I want to remind you that we sort of open ourselves to let God move into our hearts, to move into our life, to move into our lifestyles so that we can reflect God in the things that we do. Many times we feel sad that we missed a golden opportunity. The innkeeper could have thought the same thing. After Jesus was born, he would have heard that the shepherds are coming to see Jesus. The wise men are coming to see Jesus. The angels were rejoicing. There was a bright star just standing above the manger. You know, when the innkeeper would have seen all that, he would have thought, oh, I missed this golden opportunity. And there are times that we also feel the same. Missing out opportunities because we are not sensitive to hear what God wants us to talk to us or what he wants to communicate to us. If only I knew, I would have opened the inn. If only I knew, I would have opened the door. If only I knew, I would have been different. And this morning, I want to remind you, if you are able to keep your ears sensitive and attentive, you, know, you would not miss the opportunities that God is putting before you. We can reap every benefit of the opportunities that God is actually placing before us. The only thing is that we need to be sensitive to hear Him in our conversation, in our work, in our marriage, in our day-to-day -day things. In all that we do, we need to be sensitive to God to hear Him. Be sensitive to hear, not just read. Be available to hear so that you don't miss God ordained opportunity in your life shall we pray dear father we want to thank you and this evening this morning we pray oh father that you would enable us that we would not miss out god ordained opportunity in our lives for that oh father help our ears to be attentive help us to be sensitive to your voice so that we can make every opportunity count in our life so that we would be a blessing to people around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you and God bless you and Merry Christmas in advance.